Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are going to work through super quickly the EPS problems to prepare you for the final exam. So we're starting out on pages 10 and 11 in the extra practice skills section. And number 21 says, what's DE? Well, FH is a mid-segment. And I know it's a mid-segment because I see these tick marks that say that F is a midpoint on that side and that H is a midpoint on this side. And I know a mid-segment is one half the side that it's parallel to. So if I know that FH is 6.5, then I know that FE is 13. Or excuse me, DE is 13. I know that DG, well, DG is 6.5. That's half of the entire length. And GE is also 6.5. Angle FHE, let's erase some stuff. FHE is this angle right there. If I looked at these two parallel lines and thought about how they're being crossed by this transversal, I would say that this angle right there and that angle right there are supplementary. And if those two angles are supplementary, then I know that angle FHE is um, 180 minus 47. And I think that we said that FHE was 133 degrees. FG, let's come over here and erase all this stuff and see what else we can figure out. FG is this segment right there. And I'm given CE is 10.4. So if I know that that's 10.4, FG is 1 half times 10.4 or 5.2. CHF is this angle right here. Well, if I've got these parallel lines cut by a transversal, this and CHF are alternate interior angles, which makes this 47 degrees. And then I look at four, uh, then I look at the measure of angle CED. Well, I've done a lot of work already I've got this parallel right here to parallel or to this line right there, and I've got this transversal. I just said that this was 47, this angle and this angle, and this angle right here is the one that we're looking for. Those two are corresponding angles, and corresponding angles are congruent. So I know that this is 47 degrees. Moving on, we look at number 30, right? The sides in order from shortest to longest. So I need to figure out what the measure of angle M is. And if I do a little quick math, I say that 47, or measure of angle M is 90 minus 47, which is 43. My shortest side is across from my, sh my smallest angle. So LN is the shortest side. The next shortest side is going to be MN, and then the longest side is going to be across from the biggest angle, which is LM. 37 says compare RS and UV. So I need to figure out whether I'm going to use greater than or less than in that section. So I'm looking at the measure of 78, and I'm saying that the measure of 78 is smaller than the measure of seven or 85 degrees. And if 78 is smaller than 85, then the segment across from 78 is shorter than the segment across from 85, which means that RS is less than UV. Okay, I'm going to do just one of these problems, and I think number 54 is the most difficult. I encouraged you over the last couple of weeks to make certain that you understood this idea of the 30-60-90 triangle. And I said, sorry, I said that if this was x, that I knew the hypotenuse was 2 times x, and I knew that the long leg was x times the square root of 3. And I'm a really big fan of writing out the phrase. So I know that the hypotenuse equals the short side times 2, and the long leg equals the short leg times the square root of 3. All right, I'm working on number 54 because I think it's the hardest one. And um, let's see, I can't find the hypotenuse yet 
because I don't know what the short side is. But I do know the long side. So I'm going to come over to this one and I'm going to say the long side is 12. And right now I'm calling the short side x. So I'm going to say the long side is 12 equals the short side x times the square root of 3. And now I have to solve for x. Now I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 3. And that's going to allow me to cross those two things out. And on the right-hand side, I'll have x. And this will be 12 over the square root of 3. This will be a multiple choice question, most likely. You may or may not see this on the extended response. So what I'm going to do is prepare you for the extended response. But at this point, if this were on the multiple choice, you might want to just go to your calculator, divide 12 by the square root of 3, jot down the answer, and then test out the answers in the multiple choice and see which one agrees. But if it's on the extended response and I tell you that you have to show me this in simplest radical form, you do, do need to know how to do the next step or two. So in order to get that radical 3 out of the denominator, I'm going to multiply this fraction by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. The square root of 3 over the square root of 3 is just 1. I'm not changing the value of this side of the equation. I'm just choosing or changing the way it looks. So when I multiply fractions, I multiply straight across the top. And I multiply straight across the bottom. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. This is not the simplest radical form. What's outside the radical stays outside the radical. So I'm going to think about what is 12 divided by 3. So my final answer is going to be x equals 4 times the square root of 3. However, not finished. Found x. That was the first thing. Now I need to take x and I need to plug it into this equation to figure out what the hypotenuse is. So I'm going to fill in what I know. We're calling the hypotenuse y. We just figured out that the short side was 4 times the square root of 3, and I need to double that by multiplying it by 2. When I multiply a mixed number like this, what's outside the radical stays outside the radical. 2 and 4 are both outside the radical symbol, so I'm going to multiply them together. 4 times 2 is 8, and then the square root of 3, that just stays. All right, so that's how we're going to do that one. Number eight, find the interior angle measures of a convex heptagon. Hmm. All right, sorry about that. Naturally, I start recording and I need to cough constantly. The sum of the interior angle measures of a convex heptagon. A heptagon is a seven-sided figure. So we had a formula n minus 2 times 180. And that would tell us what the sum of the interior angles is. Um, and in this case, a heptagon equals 7. So I'm going to plug in 7 minus 2. And then I'm going to multiply that by 180. So I've got 5 times 180. I feel like that is a good time for me to pause and make certain that the calculator is ready to go. Give me just a second. So 5 times 180 gives me 900 degrees. Really? 5 times 180? All right, it's 900 degrees. And that's all we had to do. We just needed to find the sum of all seven of those angles. Find the measure of each interior angle of a regular 15 gone. So I need to find regular. Regular means that all the sides and all the angles are congruent. So the first thing I need to do is use that formula, n minus 2 times 180, where n equals 15. So I'm going to say 15 minus 2 times 180. So that's 13 times 180. I'm going to go over here and calculate that. 180 times 13, and that gives me 2,340. So 2,340 is the sum of all the interior angles of my 15 gone, but it wants to know the measure of each interior angle. So I'm going to take 2,340, and I'm going to divide that by 15. So I divide that by 15, and I get 156 degrees. 
the measure of each interior angle is 150 degrees. Find the value of x in polygon FGH uh, JKL. So there's actually two different ways to do this. I can say that all of my exterior angles add up to be 360. So I'm going to start there and say 3x plus 5x plus 3x plus 4x plus 5x plus 4x equals, well, all of those outside angles add up to 360 degrees. So now I'm going to say 3x plus 5x is 8x plus 3 is 11, 15, 20x, 24x. So once I add up all of those, I get 24x equals 360 degrees. I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to divide 360 divided by 24, and that tells me that x equals 15. Find the value of x in the polygon. The other thing that I could do is I could pick any angle on here. Uh, let's choose this angle right there. Well, this is 4x, and this is 180 minus 4x. I'm going to pause this and think for a second. All right, I'm actually going to abandon that because as I think about it, um, in order to do the method that I was going to use, I have to know that this is a regular polygon, and I do not have a regular polygon, so we're going to move on. I need to find MP. It says MNOP is a parallelogram. Find each measure. Some of the things that I know about, about a parallelogram, I know that opposite sides are congruent. I know that adjacent angles are supplementary. I know that opposite angles are congruent. I know that lines are parallel. I have a whole bunch of things that I know. But the first most key thing is to know that opposite sides are congruent. So if I'm looking for MP, I can say that the measure of MP is congruent to or equal to 6x minus well, what I want to say is that MP is congruent to NO. And I can say that the value of MP is 3x plus 8, and NO is 6x minus 10. And I'm going to solve for x by subtracting 3x from both sides. 8 equals 3x minus 10. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. This gives me 18 equals 3x. I'm going to divide both sides by 3 and x equals 6. The question doesn't ask me what x is, it asks me what mp is. mp equals 3 times 6 plus 8. So 3 times 6 is 18, 18 plus 8 is 26. It wants to know what the measure of angle M is. Well, I know that the measure of angle M plus the measure of angle N equals 180 degrees since those two angles are supplementary. So 13x plus 12 plus 21x minus 2 equals 180. 13x plus 21x gives me 34x. Plus 12 minus 2 gives me plus 10 equals 180. I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. 34 equals 170. 34x equals 170. I'll divide both sides by 34. So 170 divided by 34 gives me 5. So x equals 5. Again, the problem does not ask me what x equals. It says, what is the value or what's the measure of angle m? So the measure of angle M is 13 times 5 plus 12. 13 times 5 is 65 plus 12 gives me 77. The measure of angle M is 77 degrees. And the measure of angle N is... Uh, the measure of angle N equals 180 minus the measure of angle M, which we just said was 77 degrees. So the measure of angle N equals 103 degrees. 
All right. I'm going to erase everything, give myself a little bit more room. We need to show that RSTU is a parallelogram for x equals 2 and y equals 3. I'm nearly 100% certain that it's not going to be phrased like this, but you'll have to apply what you know about parallelograms to show me side lengths. So I know in parallelograms that opposite sides are congruent, which means that 4x plus 3 equals 9x minus 7. And I could do this two ways. I could solve for x and make certain that equals 2, or I could plug 2 in. Honestly, at this point, I would just as soon solve for x. All right, that's half the battle. Let's solve for y. Y is here and here, so I'm going to say opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, so I will set those two opposite side lengths equal to each other. And from here, I'm going to solve for Y. Divide both sides by 3. Y equals 3. And is that what it was supposed to be? Yay, we're super smart. Okay, so that's 18. EPS 12 and 13 and kite T U V W. That's the alarm that says I have to go home. Hmm, I think I'm going to be late. Um, in kite T U V W, the measure of angle X T U, X T U is this one right here. Um, this measures 65 degrees, and the measure of angle UVT, UVT is this one right here, that one is 32 degrees. Find each measure. Um, one of the things that I'm going to go ahead and mark before I start anything is where those two diagonals cross at point X, those are all 90 degree angles. That's a property that we know about kites. I only need to make one marking for the right angle, and that fills everything else in there. So I need to find TUX. All right, well, if I look at TUX, I have this triangle right here. This is 90, this is 65, and so that's what we're looking for. Um, we have a thing that says that if we have a right angle, the two acute angles are complementary, so all I have to do is add them up and set them equal to 90, and that is going to tell me that x is 25 degrees, or measure of angle T U x is 25 degrees. We need to find x u v. x u v is this one right here. So let's trace this triangle. I've got this triangle right here. I'm going to bring it over, make it a little bit bigger. This one is 32, this is 90, and that's the one I'm looking for. So again, I'm going to say x plus 32 equals 90. So x equals 58. So x uv equals 58 degrees. And then t w x, t w x is this one down here. Hmm. Oh, that's got a little distorted. This is 90. And I know that this is 65, and I know that this is also 65. And the reason why I know that's 65 is that diagonal bisects those uh, angle V and angle T. It does not bisect these two. All right. So it bisects it. So I know that uh, if the top angle is 65, the bottom angle is 65. And that just means that the angle that I'm looking for is still 25 degrees. So this is 25 degrees. All right. Find RS. Well, I think 
that I think that we're trying to find something that has to do with the fact that WT is a midsection, a mid-segment of this trapezoid. And we had a formula that said we know that the mid-segment of a trapezoid is one half the two bases added together. So on a trapezoid, the bases are the two parallel pieces. The legs are the non-parallel pieces. So WT is 25. And one half B1, well, that can be what we're looking for. I'll put a little X up there. That's such a cute little trapezoid, by the way. X plus 41. All right, you can distribute the one half. I'm not going to. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. 25 times 2 is 50. And 2 times 1 half is 1. So that means that on this side, it simplifies down to x plus 41. From here, I'm going to subtract 41 from both sides, which gives me x equals 9. So rs equals 9. Um, this is relatively similar. I just need to find the mid-segment. Mid so I'm going to say x equals 1 half b1 plus b2. x equals... 18 plus 26. I know this is totally contradictory to what I just said, but I'm going to distribute that because both of those are even numbers. And I don't know what 18 plus 26 is off the top of my head, but 18 times 1 half is 9 and 26 times 1 half is 13. So that becomes x equals 22. So xy equals 22. We have got J, K, L, and triangle M, N, O. And what am I trying to find? All right, I need to pause and look at the directions because this is not telling me what I need to do. I'll be right back. Sorry, I need to grab a textbook and figure out what we're trying to do. The directions for this says, determine whether the polygons are similar. If so, write a similarity ratio and a similarity statement. So that's what we're going to do. Also, Mr. Wheeler just whizzed by on a motorized toilet. So there's that. So I'm going to look at this and say I'm going to put my two smallest things together, my two mediumest things together, and my two biggest things together. So I'm going to say uh, 3 over 2. Well, I'm, I'm testing a theory. So I would say 3 over 2, is that equal to 4 over 5? Is that equal to 8 over 6? Um, nope, because this is 1.5, and this is 1.25, and this is not either one of those. So these two things, these two triangles are not similar. Please keep in mind, I'm going to pull up a, a spare, an empty thing. If I tell you that I have two triangles, so three, four, five, and this one is going to be six, eight, ten. All I did was double these. I'm telling you that these two triangles are similar. So A, B, C, X, Y, Z. You are going to be responsible for if it's possible, setting up the similarity ratios. So again, your smallest two things together, your middle two things together, and then your biggest two things together. So I'm going to say 3 over 6. Does that equal 4 over 8? Does that equal 5 over 10? And in this case, that is a true statement. All of this equals 1 half. These two triangles are similar. So that's my similarity ratio. My similarity ratio is one half. Now I need to write a similarity statement. So I'm going to say, well, the first thing that I did was AB. Um, and it doesn't really matter how you do it. You, you know at this point that this is congruent to this or similar to this. And we use this notation. We did a squiggle. We know that this is similar to this, 
and we know that this side is similar to this side. So now I just need to write a similarity statement that makes sense based on my markings. So I'm going to say triangle A, B, C is similar to X, Y is similar to AB, and then BC is similar to YZ. So that's my similarity statement. Conversely, if you have this similarity statement, you would say the first two things over the first two things, the second two things over the second two things is equal to the first and third over the first and third. So AC over XC. Just wanted to refresh your, your memory about that. All right, let's double back and take a look at uh, number 22. If we're given X up or we're given this triangle where angle X is bisected, we're using this when we're bisecting this. The phrase that we did for this one was left over right. This isn't in the same format that we learned it. So you're just going to turn your test paper sideways. In this particular case, I can't turn my test paper sideways, but I can do magic and I can do this. I move this junk off to the side. So now my left is 9 and my right is 2x plus 3. My left is 18 and my right is 7x minus 12. Now I'm going to swing this backwards so that it doesn't look crazy. I'm going to remember to use parentheses when I cross multiply because I don't like these polynomials left loosey goosey. So I'm going to say 9 times 7x minus 12 equals 18 times 2x plus 3. I'm going to distribute 9 and 18 into their respective uh, parentheses. This is 63x. 9 times 12, I got to admit, it's the last day of school for me too, and I need to go to a calculator because that's 108. Uh, this is 36x, and 18 times 3 is 56. Let's double check that. 18 times 3 gives me, oh, 54. Good thing I checked. All right. I'm going to subtract 36x from both sides. Gives me 27x and divide both sides by 27 and x equals 6. Given that triangle RSV is similar to triangle RTU, find the coordinates of S and the scale factor. Well, if I know those two things are similar, I can say that RV over RU is going to be equal to RS over RT. Let's see, RV is six units long. You might be tempted to say negative six, and you could. It'll work out that way. And RU is eight. I'm making them positive because I'm looking at it in terms of being a length or a distance. RS, I don't know what RS is. RS is X, and RT is 16. So at this point, I'm just going to cross multiply. I have 6 times 16 equals 8x. I'm going to divide both sides by 8, and that tells me that x equals 12. Now, it wants to know the coordinates of s, so the coordinates of s are 12, 0. The other thing that it wants to know is the scale factor. Well, the scale factor is this right here. It's just the proportion that I set up. However, I do need to reduce it. So I'm going to say that k equals, remember k was the, the variable that we used for the scale factor. I don't think that's on the exam, but you know, it's a handy trivia just, you, just in case you go on, tri on Jeopardy. So 6 over 8 is 3 over 4, so that's your scale factor. Write a similarity statement comparing the three triangles in each diagram. I know how much we all love doing this.
this. All right, I'm going to start with the big triangle, and I'm going to start for consistency's sake. For each of these three triangles, I'm going to start with the right angle. I'm going to go down the long side, and then I'm going to go, oh, I don't even know. My brain is really tired. So I'm going to say triangle D. No, when I set this up, I am going to... I'm going to go the right angle down the hypotenuse, and then I'm going to go down the long leg. This will help me be consistent if I do the same thing every time. So I started out at the right angle. I'm going to go across the hypotenuse to um, angle C, and then across the, the long leg to B. So that triangle is going to be similar to, I'm going to go to the medium sized triangle, and I'm going to trace this. And I'm going to use the same format, right angle, hypotenuse to long. So this is going to be, I'm going to start out at the right angle. Folks, I do apologize. I am at this point a little bit exhausted and like you guys, a little bit done. So I've just made a mistake. So I need to erase this line right here and rewrite it. All right, so working with the large triangle right here, I started out with the right angle. I went down the long leg, and I'm going to go uh, now across the hypotenuse. So looking at that red triangle, I'm going to start at D. That's my right angle. I'm going to go across my long leg to C, and then across my hypotenuse to A. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to come up here. I've changed colors to blue. I'm going to start at my right angle, and I'm going to go down the long leg. So I'm going to start at B. I go down the long leg to C, and then across the hypotenuse to D. And now I'm going to go tackle the tiniest of the triangles, which I'm going to do in green. I'm going to start at the right angle, which is B. I'm going to go across the long side of that triangle to D, and then across the hypotenuse to A. So there's the three similarity statements for that triangle. All right, EPS 16 and 17, woohoo, on to chapter eight. Find the unknown measures, round lengths to the nearest hundredth, and find the angles to the nearest degree. I am not going to find QR because that's the Pythagorean theorem, and I really do trust that you guys know how to do this. So I'm going to look at angle Q, and the things that I, um, so I need to know angle Q, and the things that I already know are the opposite and the adjacent. So the phrase du jour is so ka toa for this section. The thing that uses opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I'm going to say tangent of Q equals, keep in mind that the order matters. Opposite is on top. The last thing is on the bottom. So opposite is 2.5 and the adjacent is 3.8. When I'm finding a side length, I use sine, cosine, or tangent. When I'm looking to find an angle measure, I use sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. So the way to undo this tangent is take tangent inverse of the opposite side. So I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to type in tangent inverse. So trig function, toggle over to tangent inverse, and I'm going to do 2.5 divided by 3.8 and hit enter. That tells me that my angle is 33.34 degrees. So Q is 33.34 degrees, except for the rounding says round it to the nearest degree. So that means that Q is approximately 34 degrees. And if I know that Q is 34 degrees, all I have to do is subtract that from 90 to figure out what the measure of angle R is. 90 minus 34 gives me 56 degrees. For number 26, I know an angle and I know a side, but I'm looking to find 
something. I need to know the long leg, the short leg, the opposite, the adjacent. I'm going to go ahead and erase all of this stuff to give me more room. I'm going to leave my Sokotoa up there. All right, we're looking at number 26. And I have angle V, or yeah, I have angle V. Let's let's try to figure out that adjacent. So what I know is the hypotenuse. What I need to know with relation to angle V is the adjacent. The thing that has to do with opposite, or excuse me, adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So cosine of 27 degrees equals the adjacent. That's the thing that we're looking for over the hypotenuse, which is 9.6. When we're trying to break up a fraction, we multiply both sides by the denominator. And that allows me to cross that out. And the only thing that remains on this side is x. So I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to type in 9.6 cosine 27. All right, so 9.6 trig function cosine of 27 degrees tells me 8.553. 8.553, but it wants us to round to the nearest hundredth. This is the tens place, this is the hundredths. I look at this, and that determines what I do with the second thing. So my final answer is TV is 8 is approximately 8.55. I would use the Pythagorean theorem to find the other side, and in order to figure out what angle u is, I would merely subtract 27 from 90. Number 27 is very, very similar to problem number 25, so I'm going to skip that in the interest of time. The circum, we need to find the circumference of f in which a equals 49 x squared pi centimeters squared. So I'm going to start by writing down the circumference formula is 2 pi r. And the area formula is pi r squared. And the thing that I know is I have some circle f, and its area is 49 x squared pi. And what I need to figure out is what's r? Once I figure out what r is, I'm just going to dump it into this formula over here. So my goal is to get r by itself. The thing that isn't r is pi. So I'm going to divide both sides by pi. Those two things cross out. And I'm left with r squared equals 49x squared. So in order to get r by itself, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And that is going to give me that r equals 7x. Well, I realize this is horribly unsatisfying to you, but that is what it is, r equals 7x. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to plug it in there. So the circumference is 2 pi 7x. I need to tidy this up. 2 times 7 is 14, so 14 pi x. For the next one, number 15, we have to find the shaded area. So I have the area of the rectangle minus the area of the circle is going to give me the area of the shaded region. The area of the rectangle is base times height, and the area of the circle is pi r squared. My rectangle has a base of 24. So far, so good. The question becomes, what's the height of my rectangle? Well, if my radius is 8 centimeters, that means that's 8. It also means that this is 8. And if that's 8 and that's 8, the whole height is 16. So I'm going to say base times height is 24 times 16. Subtract pi um, r squared is 8 squared. And I'm going to go straight to my calculator with this, 24 times 16. I'm going to hit Enter, and then I'm going to hit Minus. That'll bring up the answer that we just got. And I'm going to do uh, 8 squared times pi. And that gives me 182.938. 182.938. 182 
But as soon as I write it down, I come back up and I check my rounding directions. It says round to the nearest tenth. This is the nearest tenth, so I look at this one. Three is not big enough to change the middle of the value, so the area of the shaded region is approximately 182.9 meters squared. Oh, by the way, this is centimeters. All right. 22 and 23. Um, remember, the volume formulas will be given to you, not the area formulas. Um, so the cylinder, sorry, that probably hurt. I was thinking um, the area of my cylinder is base times height. That capital B is not... I have to figure out what that is. So capital B is the area of the base, which is pi r squared, and then I'm going to multiply that by h. So c equals pi. I'm going to plug in 6 squared and 12 into my thing. So c equals pi times 36 times 12, and I am going to go to my calculator and say 36 times 12 times pi, and I do need to plug in pi because it says round it to the nearest tenth. I get 1357.17, 1357.17, and this is an approximation. If I plugged in pi, there's no way that it just came out even to two decimal points. It's the way the calculator is set up, 1357.17, and it says round to the nearest tenth. I look at this, and that is big enough to change this. So my or my cylinder's area is uh, one thousand three hundred and fifty-seven point two inches cubed. Okay. Um, my cone volume is going to be one third the base times the height. My base for this is pi r squared, and so my volume is one-third times pi times 9 squared times 18. My volume is one-third times pi times 81 times 18. You can go straight to your calculator. I find it easiest to do all the regular numbers first um, and then do the pi, so one-third times 81 times 18, just doing this slow, 81 times 18 is that divided by 3, all right, 486 times pi, and that gives me 1,526.8, 1,526.8. Point eight, and again, this is approximately, and this is feet cubed. All right. For number 18, we're not going to do the surface area. Uh, we really concentrated on volume, and there is no surface area formula in uh, on the exam. So the volume for a sphere is... 4 thirds pi r cubed, but ultimately, once I find that answer, I'm going to multiply my answer by 1 half, because I'm working on a, on a hemisphere. I only need half the volume of the sphere. So let's see. I have 4 thirds times pi my radius. Now keep in mind, in this particular case, my height is also my radius. This is also 12 millimeters. So my radius is 12, and I need to cube that. And then once I cube, or I find this whole answer, I'm going to divide it by 2 or multiply it by 1 half. So let's go to our calculator and do some math. 12 cubed gives me 1,728, and I need to multiply that by 4 thirds. So times 4 over 3, that gives me 2,304, and now I'm going to multiply that by pi, and that gives me uh, approximately oh, 7238.23, 7238, 
738.28. Holy guacamole, I'm so sorry. My brain has just, it kind of died, actually. After fourth block, everything just fell out of it. So now I'm going to take this answer and divide it by 2. And so my approximate volume for my, my hemisphere is 3,619, so 3619.11. But we are, oh no, folks, we were supposed to do this in terms of pi. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, you guys. All right, back to the drawing board, which is going to be way, way easier. I'm going to do 12 cubed times 4 over 3. And I'm going to divide that answer by 2. So that gives me 1,152, 1,152 pi. This isn't even an approximately equal to because if I've left it in terms of pi, my answer is exact and my meters or my units is meters cubed. Woo. All right, let's see what's next. Uh, the segments in each figure are tangent to the circle. Find each length. So they are tangent from the same point, which means these two things are congruent. 3x minus 5 equals 2x plus 7. I just need to solve for x. And I need to find PQ. So I found that x equals 12. And PQ equals 3x minus 5. 3 times 12 minus 5 is 36 minus 5. PQ equals 31. Find each measure, measure round to the nearest tenth. We need to find the measure of arc FB. So I look at this and I go, FC is a diameter. And if FC is a diameter, that means that this arc right here is 180 degrees. But I don't want that whole arc. I just want FB, this arc right here. And I notice that the only thing that's not in the semicircle is just this little piece right here. So I'm going to take 180, and from that I'm going to subtract 25, and that's going to tell me what FB is. So FB is 180 minus 25 is 155 degrees. All right, we're cooking. EPS 24 and 25. BD. All right, we need to find BD. I'm going to draw in this radius, and that radius is 10. I know this because I've got 7 here and 3 here, and this is also a radius. So I'm going to trace out this triangle right here because it's a nice right triangle, and I know some stuff for it. I know that this is 7, I know that this is 10, and I know that this is a right angle. So I'm going to say 7 squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. And one of the other, 10 squared is 100. Uh, I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to label this x and I'm going to label this x. I need to remember that my final answer is 2x. All right, 7 squared is 49. I'm going to subtract 49 from both sides. x squared equals 51. x equals, I have no idea what x equals. So I'm going to come to my calculator and say the square root of 51 is 7.14. But I don't want x. I want double x. So BD equals 2 times 7.14, and that means that BD equals 14.28. I don't have units, so I'm good. All right, find the area of the sector round to the nearest tenth. The formula for the area is A equals pi R squared M over 360. My area is pi times 6 is my radius squared. And M is 75 over 360. So area equals pi times 36 times 75 over 360. I recognize that 36 over 360, well, I'm going to cancel this and this, and this is 10. So I have area equals 
75 divided by 10 is 7.5 times pi. My directions say round to the nearest tenth, so I have to go to my calculator and say 7.5 times pi gives me 23.56. 23.56, this is an approximate value, and I need to round it to the nearest tenth, so I'm going to look at that. That changes this, so the area is 23.56. Point six. It's an area. My units are meters squared. Oh, this is approximate. And that's it. Have a fantastic weekend, friends. Good luck. Come by and ask me questions if you have them. Thanks. Bye-bye.